Hey guys, so I got a comment in one of my videos about the power. Somebody noticed a bunch of solar panels sitting around when I was making another video. And I wanted to kind of show you guys what I'm doing with it. Um, I am here in the shed with my rack and all that fun stuff. Um, please excuse the AC noise, but it is still very hot even though it's in the afternoon already here. Um, so this is what I have. I have a grid tied inverter system. Uh, here outside, I have, let me just see if I can just do it from here. Got two solar panels there. Let me just. I got just two solar panels. Um, each of these solar panels is a 200 watt solar panel. Um, just a, they're only, I think they're 24 volt solar panels. Um, they're not. I, I got them off Craigslist. Dirt cheap. Um, guy was moving, wanted to get rid of them. I picked them up. Um, so the grid tied inverter is here to hopefully offset some of the power that I use um, for the servers and, and, and things like that. Um, you know, it, this is just a proof of concept. When it's, when it's all said and done, I want to get like really good solar panels, you know, that are a couple hundred bucks each. But I just wanted to make sure, you know, and see that I could, if I can do this. So I do have it, you know, lightning arrested, breaker. None of this is code, but you know, whatever. Um, my shed is wired. I don't have any water or anything like that in my shed, but it's all labeled. These are where the ports go. Um, one thing you will notice on all my jacks, people in the U.S. think that that's upside down. That's actually the way they're supposed to be, right? Imagine if this screwdriver falls on a contact and it's not right side up. It bridges the two contacts, makes a fire, trips a breaker, does whatever it is. If something falls between your plugs and when they're like this, you just hit the ground and you're fine. Everything's good. Nothing burns, no fires. Why don't we always install things like that? Don't know. Anyways, get back to it. Um, so grid tied inverter, uh, right now, obviously it's not putting out anything. This is one of those, uh, uh, picked it up off Amazon for like three something or other. At first I bought a really cheap one, plugged it in, got it all connected, did all the work, and it wouldn't do anything at all. <laughs> it just never worked. So I returned it and picked up this one for basically the same price again. But the cost more, but this thing worked right out of the box. No problems, no issues, no challenges. It, was, it worked great. Uh, and then, so it comes down here, feeds into this. One thing I would recommend you do, if you do a grid tied solar system where you're gonna be putting any kind of significant wattage back into your network, don't use the tiny little like 18 gauge uh, cable. Order a really nice one. This is actually like, I think it's a trip light branded cable and it's like 12 gauge or something like that. Or it's, it's, it's noticeably thicker and stiffer. Then I have these little Emporia things here. I use these things all over my house to monitor how much electricity things use. Um, so I can see like during the day, the wattage that I have now, but the solar placement outside is not ideal. So I only get about maybe six, seven hours of total solar input each day. And you know, it, it is what it is. That, again, that was proof of concept. The other good thing about me having them on that end is that is the south side of the shed. So it does provide shade to that whole wall. Uh, as you can see, I have all the insulation up here. Um, everyone always tells me it's backwards and I keep telling them it doesn't matter. If anybody knows, if it really does matter, if you have the aluminum facing out or facing in, let me know. I asked guys at the box store that I bought all this stuff from and they said it doesn't matter. So I don't know, you know, it's all up now though. Look, it's, it's, it's everywhere. So <laughs> it is what it is. It's up now, but you know, maybe it's just helping keep me warmer in the winter. Um, so anyway, so you'll see here, there's a plug here. There's a really busy plug over here. There's one here. I have some more power stuff over here for the lab area, you know, um, lots of stuff, some more stuff, pew pew stuff, old servers. Another, this is a really nice solar panel that I picked up off Craigslist, but they only had one. And I got there and the guy's like, oh, I got four. I got there and he had 
four, but the other ones were absolutely destroyed. So didn't buy those. But those are the other two that go along with the two that are outside. I'll be mounting those soon. Um, but so yeah, that's pretty much the power breakdown. Um, I'll show you the server rack power. So you'll see here, um, I have another one of those Emporias that monitors everything that goes into the rack. Everything, all this goes into the rack here. Um, the rack itself, I have three APC 1500 uh, units. The top two are daisy chained to each other. The bottom one is dedicated to only the two Starlinks, the PF Sense router, and the switching that happens inside the rack. Um, the top two are daisy chained, and one of the 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 top one doesn't have great batteries in it. It's got some cheap ones I picked up from Amazon. Uh, and they just don't seem to last as long. The bottom one will run for like 35, 40 minutes. And then the top one only runs for like 25 minutes. Uh, I don't know if it has anything to do with the fact that maybe the sine waves does change slightly when it's under ba battery power. And maybe that just, just you know doesn't last as long or something. I don't know. I'm not sure. But um, that's pretty much the rack so power wise like I said everything comes in here to the top gets conditioned and passed out through um, uh, these so this is all networking this power power bar there and then these have um, these are my digital loggers controllable switches two of them there uh, the way I had the one there is for like servers and other gear in the ser in the network or in the rack that doesn't have redundant power. Anything that has redundant power goes into this because this has two legs. Um, one goes directly to the main side of the the uh, uh, the power distribution unit up here, and then that plugs are on the back of that, and then the plugs on the front are all the ones that are like you can control and automatic switching and. All kinds of stuff like that so that's about it for the power um any questions let me know bye